Don't be a clog in the wheel of Nigerian progress. Let us look forward. Let us be determined that corruption will go. Let me repeat the last statement of President Bola Tinubu. He said, let us be determined that corruption will go. What, the, what does that mean? Is it that you, the pioneer of corruption, are you leaving the position, the position of presidency or what? Or what are you doing to fight the corruption that you that it was the corruption that you became that you you used to become the president of nigeria it's not corruption that you use i will just stay connected to the very end of the video so that i can play the full video of what this man said in this in this video because you know what shewo said in this video will blow your mind i'll be back see you soon the hope of crime is happening in the street again the center of political news, celebrity gossip, religious gossip, and happiness in the society. Join us, the voice of Africa. Hello, my great and wonderful viewers. Welcome back to Life Pot TV Show. If you are new to this show, don't forget to click the subscribe button, the like button, the bell beside it, and also drop a comment in the comment section about what is going on in Nigeria, about what is going on in Africa, and especially what is going on in Nigerian policies, so that you will be notified anytime we drop any other video into the channel. Basically, President Bola Tinubu said he is gonna fight corruption. You know, I, I then then I sat that and I think about it that this was exactly what um Buhari said in his own regime that he is gonna fight corruption and during his regime corruption was rampant was the major was, was, was like the the major thing that politicians were doing though so my question that people were now asking people people have been asking a lot of questions even Shane Okibalo of Channel TV asked this question in this video that is this corruption pertaining to you because corruption was the only way that you can you, that um, President Bola Tinubu used to become the president of Nigeria. Because we 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 we, we Nigerians we know that it was not the right way that he used to enter the president to become the president of Nigeria. But we don't care. But the question that we are asking President Bola Tinubu now is that is he gonna? push himself away from the power uh, from the presidential seat is he gonna leave the, the presidential seat for the right person or is gonna fight the is gonna fight the corruption in his own way because we don't know just stay connected to the very end of the video so that you can hear what Shane Okibaloye said that you know blew um, the internet in the early hours of today because I was really really surprised that this man Shane Okibaloye can say this kind of statement because it is the right thing to do. It is the right thing to do. If you just stay connected to the very end of the video, share this video. I'll be back. See you soon. Weeks ago, President Bola Tinubu led a ministerial retreat where he gave a marching order for ministers and members of his cabinet on delivery of their ministry's mandate. Let me remind you of what he said. He has set standards to how he hopes for them to carry out their duties. In fact, there are parameters for performance and there will be routine checks on whether they have delivered on their ministry mandate. Let me remind you of what President Tinubu said. I mean, nothing to fear. If you miss the objective, we review. <laughs> if no performance, you leave us. No one is an island, and the book stop on my desk. Don't be a clog in the wheel of Nigerian progress. Let us look forward. Let us be determined that corruption will go. Progress will be achieved. That was a few weeks ago when the president had the opening session of the ministerial retreat. If you don't perform, 
you will go. Well, as a Nigerian, have you been looking and watching what the ministers and India ministries are doing? Have you been monitoring whether or not they are performing? Because, well, <laughs> the man says, the box stops at his desk. Well, one ministry that has indeed gotten the attention of the nation is the Interior Ministry, where the minister is showing some character and passion in delivering his mandate. However, there's so much work to be done and expectations are high. A lot of people did not even think that the Interior Ministry has so much work or perhaps has enormous responsibilities and has under it its own mandate for delivery that are so numerous. The man promised to clear backlog of passports at the immigration service. That was done. Now, he said there will be the congestion of prison and it appears over 4,000 inmates will be going home after their fines appear to have been cleared. Tonight, let's delve into the ministry mandate. Let's do some appraisals. Let's ask him some questions. And particularly, uh, concerned tonight in this conversation about the issues of security, internal security of this country, which is quite very important. It's one of the major responsibilities of government tonight. Honorable Minister of Interior, Honorable Tunji, uh, Tunji Ojo joins us live here in Abu Jassiru. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister, for joining us tonight. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, when I spoke with you and uh, extended this invitation to you, I said, I I'm more uh, concerned about the issue of security, which you told me on the phone, that there are a lot that you are doing. And I'm, I mean, I would love to, the, the last time, we couldn't delve into the area of internal security. But tonight, let's begin with it. In what respect do you think that Nigerians should be happy about what you are doing and what do you have in the bag in terms of internal security? Well, thank you very much and thank you, Nigerians. Um, <clears throat> as the pre I will start from what the president said. He said nobody is an island and you know security is everybody's business. Security is not a single man's business, it's everybody's business. And I can tell you that um, this particular administration under the leadership of uh, President Bola Metinubu has recorded a lot of successes. But just as you know, uh, procedures, methodologies are not issues that you discuss, you know, um, on camera. But nevertheless, we can see the effect in terms of uh, banditry. We can see the reduction in banditry. We can see the um, reduction in um, kidnapping. We can see reduction across um, all indicators of um, insecurity in our society. Just as the National Security Advisor said, a lot of coordination is presently going on and all uh, the police, uh, Ministry of Police Affairs, Ministry of Interior and of course the Ministry of Defense, we are all working together in synergy to ensure that Nigerians can sleep with their two eyes closed. I haven't said that but to the Ministry of Interior per se, I've always said this and I'll repeat it again that um, it is my principle, it's my belief and I know that the President shares that same uh, passion. He, in fact, he is the architect of this particular statement that um, is, is, is secure border is a safe nation. You know, you can only uh, defend your, your country when your borders are actually secured. So in that area, a lot of work is being done at the moment in terms of border governance um, in, uh, in, uh, in conjunction with other uh, border um, um, security agencies were presently putting all the structure to, uh, in place to be able to secure our border space. As I've said, uh, our border is quite interesting. Two of the countries that we border in West Africa, then two are non-ECOWAS countries. For example, Cameroon is not ECOWAS and I think Chad is not ECOWAS. Niger and Benin Republic, these are ECOWAS countries. So obviously, from ECO, those that are uh, members of the ECOWAS state, of course, they can enter Nigeria by virtue of the ECOWAS Treaty, but, do, but Cameroon and, and, um, and um, Chad, under normal condition, are not licensed to enter without uh, a visa or, you know, um, entry permits, you know. So there's a lot that we need to do. So we have to be able to look at the effect of, um, of uh, activities within the Sahel, how it affects our border communities, and also be able to look at the issues, as I always say, how do we make our country, our border communities more integral rather than being contagious as they are at the moment? So there's a lot that uh, this government is actually working on with regards to, to that. And also, let me also speak about NSCDC. NSCDC, we know NSCDC is, is uh, by law empowered 
to protect critical national assets. NSCDC has, is, I mean, is, is um, empowered to, pro to protect our brown waters. They are expected to protect even our mineral sites and, of course, even some of our farmlands and our schools and a lot of things. So we are, we are actually, we've launched this uh, Safe School Initiative, which is to be able to ensure the main objective for me and uh, is to make sure that a child either you are in the the farthest of places from abuja should be able to have the same confidence as a child in abuja has to go to school and, uh, and knowing fully well that he's going to go to school in a safe manner and come back home in a safe manner so may you be in meduguri may you be in uh, bakasi may you be anywhere else you should have the level of uh, security that a child in uh, abuja has or a child in lagos so we want to make sure that um, as the president always says, renewed hope is not about protecting only the strong. It's about protecting the strong as well as protecting the weak. It's about making up for the inadequacies of the weak and making sure that there's a bridge that can actually transit the weak from the arena of weakness, of course, to the arena of strength, which is needed for economic and social emancipation of our people. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, we have about seven major land borders, isn't it? Land borders, we have a um, border with Niger, mm -hmm. we have border with um, Chad, we have border with Benin Republic, and we have border with Cameroon, Cameroon. yes. Yeah, they, I mean, I understand that recently there were a reopening of some of the borders. Uh, Maybe because we're talking about border posts, border posts entry yeah. point. The major we, border we, posts we, we in the have country. A, we Do you have remember a, President Buhari yeah. shot some of the border yeah. on, based on some economic and uh, partly six, mm. some security reasons, but under the Tunubu government, some of these borders were said to be partially reopened, isn't it? No, well, the borders were, never, were not shot by Buhari against human um, migration. It was purely on the issue of goods and, 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 yes. and vehicles and stuff like that, which falls under the purview of customs. Mm -hmm. Customs is not under the Ministry of Interior. Customs is under the Ministry of Finance. I, I, mean, I understand, but, but this is where I'm going But we, For our entry point, we have about 1,800 entry points, both the the, the, ma the major one, the medium, and the minor entry point. We have about 1,800, of which we have about 700 manned and about 1,100 unmanned, which are areas where the Tinubu administration is working so hard on to be able to make sure that all our entry points are manned, both in terms of human um, human capital, human uh, intervention, as well as technological um, facilities. This is where I'm going to, Honorable Minister, and I'd like yeah. to know, because Past administrations have complained about what the danger of our porous borders and what they are doing to not only our economy, but majorly the security of this country. And, you know, in fact, there was a time that, uh, the, the, the accusation is that most of the attacks we get are not from, they are from aliens. They are, they are, they are uh, external aggression are from aliens, those who are not even Nigerians, we do not know, and they are difficult to control. In fact, the narrative you will get in some part of the north is that the attacks will come, even in the northwest, the attack will come, and those people retreat, and they are not able to track them. In what way are you using technology? What technology are you studying? Which country's template are you using? What can you tell Nigerians about the effort of this government? Well, let me tell you this. As much as I wouldn't want to go into details, just as you know, I always say the security issues are not meant to be discussed on camera, but I'll say this very clearly. To you, what you've just described is the scenario we're in Nigeria. It's called asymmetric warfare, you know. And prior to about 20 years ago, you know, before the advent of Boko Haram and stuff like that, we had symmetric warfare. But now we have moved from that arena. We saw, and in most countries, when you have asymmetric warfare, it takes time for you to be able to solve it. We saw what happened in uh, Sri Lanka, you know, that took about 20 years, you know, with the Tamil Tigers, it took about 20 years because these people, they hit you, they, they fizzle out, they mix up, and it's a, it's a bit complex. So, but what we're, we're actually doing, as I will say this, is that I said at the beginning, a secure border is a safe nation. We have understood that now. And there's no going back on that. The president is hell-bent on that. He has given us marching orders, Ministry of Interior, secure this border. I want this border secured. 
and technology of course has to be involved because this is not 2003 this is 2023 so the role of technology as of course enhancement of solution delivery cannot be undermined in whatever we say so we are looking of course there are three sectors we look at the human intelligence aspect which is very key because you can only protect people as much as they want to be protected that's just the truth we saw what happened in afghanistan we saw what happened in Iraq, what happened in Libya. If people do not support you, give you the human intelligence that you need, it might be a bit difficult for you to be able to solve problem of insecurity. That's one. Two, you need, of course, technology. You know, I will not want to tell you the technologies that we are understudying at this, at, the, at this particular... So you are, um, that is in the no, work? No, definitely. That's, definitely that's so in the work. You, you are able to have uh, somewhat like... Uh, a, a, a command and control center where you can be able to per time watch our borders. What, is that right? What, is that what you're planning? What, what you're saying now is like trying to, you, you want me to give you a glimpse at what is I'm happening. I'm imagining but because of course, this is but what I want to assure of, you. Is obtainable what, in other no, what I want to assure you is that there's a robust solution. Is there, as, I, as I said, you earlier, found a solution. No, definitely there is. There is. Like I always tell people, you, it's not rocket science. The problems of any country are not just peculiar to their country. I mean, whatever is happening here has happened elsewhere. So what you need to do is to copy. Of course, you adapt to your peculiarity and you paste. It's CAP. Simple. So, of course, we are, that's the essence of research. Don't forget that some of us come from consulting and research background. So it's about the solution delivery that we are that we are proposing across, but even beyond, but even in other areas, are things looking at similar countries, looking at sim countries with similar challenges and with certain level of um, peculiarities that you might have, putting that into consideration, you copy, you adapt it to your own peculiarity, mm. and you pay. So we're looking at it. Because, Honorable Minister, it was mind-boggling, and it was actually heart-wrenching when our girls were being kidnapped in their schools in the middle of the night. When our boys, young boys, were being taken in Adamawa, in their schools, in their hostels, and they are taken hours after this happened, no intervention. And they do say, security uh, um, experts will say, look, the very first few hours after such kind of attack is very crucial. A lot of the times we hear that they have been taken out of the country. And that's why a lot of people will say, and we've spoken, Chinese television has held, a special town hall on national security. And the, these solutions have been proffered that we should not have a situation where attack will be, will, will be done on our soil and hours later, we do not even have an idea, a clue on what is happening. Kujie prison was attacked hours later. Those who are in charge do not even have a clue of what happened. And that's why I'm asking the question tonight whether or not in a no distant time this government has the solution that will make nigerians happy Chair, let me tell you this i listened very carefully to you you know the difference between a talk shop and a workshop people misplace people mix these two things up this is a government built on renewed hope renewed hope means a new lease of life not doing things the same old way while expecting a different result we are in, embarking on a workshop, not a talk shop. We're not here to give you stories, tales of moonlight. We're not here to tell you how bad things are. We're here to tell you that there is light at the end of the tunnel. And we're here to tell you that under the leadership of the president, and of course, the team that he has assembled, we are hell-bent, we are determined to make sure that we solve these problems. Because the only interest that is worth protecting at every point in time, it's not just the interest of individuals. Of course, never the interest of any individual, but the interest of Nigeria. Understanding that Nigeria first, Nigeria second, and Nigeria always. And this can only be done when there is security. So you can't be rest assured, and I give you this, live on TV, that we're walking around the clock. The president is not sleeping. He is the chief security officer of Nigeria. He's the CSO of Nigeria. That's the truth. And he's, he's a commander-in-chief of the armed forces. And he understands that the primary responsibility of government is security of lives and property. And I want to tell you, it's not by mistake 
that you can see decline in the level of attacks. It's not by mistake over the last couple of months that you can see progress, that you can see that, progress, that we've been able to make progresses, that we've been able to even surmount certain hurdles. Rome wasn't built in a day, but be rest assured, we have the will. Be rest assured, the capacity is there. And be rest assured that in no distant time, Nigerians will be able to sleep with their two eyes closed. Mm. Thanks for staying connected to the very end of this video, my great and wonderful viewers. You know, I noticed something in what, in the behavior and the way this man was talking. You know, I, I noticed that he wasn't so sure about what he was saying because every single statement that Shewun was asking, every single question that Shewun was asking him, he was trying to, you know, um, redirect the question. He was trying to re rearrange the question in his own um, suitable manners. That's why I noticed that, you know, you fighting corruption. You said um, um, you said you support um, the president Bola in in a statement that he said that we are going to fight corruption and every single statement like that. But you fighting corruption, you know every single thing that has been happening before are still happening. No single changes. If changes has been happening, people will come out and appreciate the government. But people are not coming out and appreciating the government. People, all what people are doing uh, is, is you know, you know, is to is to badmouth the government. Let me let me put it like that. All what people are doing is to badmouth the government. We are not seeing any changes in what in the promises that they gave us. We are not seeing any changes. So what this man is not what this what this man should do. As a minister is you know to not listen to what the president is saying listen to the, what the people have to say not what your president not what the and the, the pioneer of corruption the major the major person in charge of corruption is is have to say that is my own idea that's what i have to give to this man because Bolamet to Bolamet to Nubu, if people you know, think that they can trust the words of Bolamet to Nubu, well, me, I can't, as a person, I can't, ne I can never trust the word of a politician. I can never trust the word of a criminal. That is the major thing. I can never trust the word of a criminal. So if we continue, if we continue to, if we Nigerians continue to pressurize these people, if we, Niger we Nigerians continue to, 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 mm, I do say it that I'm not against Bola Metunobu's administration. All what I'm against is the corruption that is behind the administration. I want a better country for the new generations to come. Not the, not that our the, the upcoming generation will meet this problem and they will still continue to face it. No. We want the, the upcoming generation to see the better the better the betterment of this country. Back in the days, this country was not like this. People, people do recommend this country for 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 the whites, but now we are the one running away from our own country. Our own country. A lot of people are running away because they can't, you know, see withstand the suffering that is going on in this country. People are suffering exactly. Rufai only said something that I do love to say in all my videos that. If these ministers know the, the kind of suffering that people are past, that are facing, they will never come out to say all this kind of statement they are saying. Well, Nigeria will continue to be Nigeria if we do not change it. So always connected, stay connected to the like button video. If you have not clicked the subscribe button, click the subscribe button, the like button, the bell beside it, and also drop your comment in the comment section about what has been said in this video, what Shewun said in this video, and what this minister said in this video. Just drop your comment in the comment section. We will see you soon in my next video. God bless you and God bless Nigeria. And don't forget, always stay positive. Thank you for staying connected and like what is so all we do on this channel is to bring to you the keywords to make a girl in America and outside America from the thousand of Jimmy Craig and Christmas to my business and we will not and all of that. So we're dealing with some value that we're talking about from them and also their professional world. And guess what? Many of these